It has been 17 months since government declared a state of emergency due to the COVID-19 pandemic. While Samoa remains COVID-free, we have felt its impact in every corner of our lives. Economies have stalled. We have changed the way we work and interact with our loved ones and our healthcare systems are stressed. Governments around the world have been forced to implement harsh restrictions on human activity to curb the spread of the virus, while we have put restrictions in place to keep the virus out. We continue to follow all preventative measures as advised by our public health authorities, like wearing of masks, frequent washing of hands and phys physical distancing, as we are still not there. COVID-19 vaccines, never before developed at such a pace and given emergency approval, are now offering a way to transition out of this phase of the pandemic. Without them, natural herd immunity will not be able to sufficiently restore our society to its normal status quo. We know that getting vaccinated helps to break the chain of the spread reduce the variance, protects others, and promotes assurance that even if we do get sick, the severity of the disease is minimal. Our healthcare workers and the public health experts persist with the task of educating our people as this helps to build trust in the decision 
to offer vaccinations, without which we can never return to normal life. Samoa would not be where it is, where it is at, with its vaccinations rollout program, without the help of many whom I would like to acknowledge. For access to vaccines, we thank the COVAX facility and the Gavi COVAX AMC, the innovative financing instrument that supports the participation of 92 low and middle income economies in the COVAX facility, including Samoa. We have received the full allocation of 79,000 doses, estimated to cover 20% of our population. As well, we thank all our partners who have contributed financially to the COVAX facility, including the USA, the UK, the EU, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, which enabled our participation in the COVAX facility. Additionally, I acknowledge the following for having selflessly provided for our needs while they were waging bigger wars against COVID in their own countries. The government of Japan, for the latest supply of 112,000 doses delivered through COVAX's dose sharing arrangement, as well as providing the ultra cold chain supply. The government of Australia, for 50,000 doses, directly supplied to us which bridged the gap in delayed supply deliveries and meeting transportation costs throughout the region under the Pacific Humanitarian Pathway. We also acknowledge their valuable contribution to the further development of our e-health system. The Government of New Zealand, for a requested 25,000 doses of AstraZeneca through the COVAX dose sharing mechanism and the Pfizer vaccine for our population of children between 12 and 17 years old. We acknowledge also the technical assistance and information sharing provided to the Ministry of Health. On our UN technical partners, in particular the WHO, for regulatory approvals and standard setting, and UNICEF as our procurement agency and management of our needs, including contributions to the development of our National Vaccines Deployment Plan under the Resident Coordinator Office and provision of testing equipment. All our partners that provided public health supplies, including PPEs, masks, and sanitizers for prevention, such as China and New Zealand. All our partners that provided financial assistance towards addressing our COVID-19 response, including the multilateral financial institutions. This COVID-19 vaccination rollout with AstraZeneca would not have been possible without the close collaboration between the Ministry of Health and all other government ministries under NEOC, as well as all our development partners under the National Vaccines Coordination Committee. I especially commend the dedication and commitment of our frontline workers, in particular our doctors and nurses, and all other health workers who have had to handle the vaccination program as well as the health arrangements for all repatriation flights, inter-island passenger ferries, cargo and fishing vessels. Our vaccine supply needs are met. Our target will be to vaccinate everyone. It is imperative that we do this to protect our families the people and our country. In closing, on behalf of the government and people of Samoa, I wish to thank you all very much for everything you have done as a well-coordinated team 
and you continue to do so because we may still be some way away from the end of what has been quite a journey and until the COVID-19 is defeated. So if we're, may you